Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Public Coin, and today I have an open box video for you from NGC. And as we get started here, I want to remind you that any of these coins, if they're still available, are in the show notes, uh, the video description, as it's known here on the YouTube. And if you uh, didn't know, we also, of course, you can you can just follow the channel. You can like, subscribe, and share. But also, uh, we have channel memberships which support the channel, support the work we're doing here, and also. Uh, if you want, there is a also a membership level that uh, gets you a little bit extra behind the scenes content and uh, some more some more of everything, right? So this is the 09s Indian Head Penny, the last year for the Indian Head Penny, one of only two uh, years that the coin was struck at the San Francisco Mint. And you know, Indian Head Pennies are funny because. People are used to a lot of the silver coins and looking for the liberty to see how much wears on the coin. Really, really though, you have to just kind of understand that there's all these design elements on the face of the Indian and all the, the headdress and all those that, that have a very soft outline to them. So it's kind of hard to tell sometimes the wear factor on these coins. And then I'm going to look at the back of the coin and you're going to see here on the reverse that uh, you really got to know how high up some of these details started and what's helpful for me anyway is like the shield because the shield has lines on it so you can kind of get a feel for wear on the on there the reverse also has a lot more detail on the wreath and then you got the arrows that go over the wreath so there's there are almost more reference points or stronger strikes in the reverse of Indian head pennies than on the obverse so it can be kind of tricky to grade them you, you, can, you can tell with all the detail left on the reverse of the coin that it's a nice middle grade coin and NGC called it a VF35 brown. And I'm laughing because they use the term brown, and I think, well, of course it is silly. Um, not that you're going to have a VF that's going to be red. Uh, this coin trades in the $450 to $500 range. And luckily, we have a second Indian head penny to take a look at. It looks dark right there, but we're going to zoom in and take a look at this 1877. Really the, considered the king of... The uh, Indian head sense. This coin has a little bit of a mark here to the left in United. One of the things I want to point out compared to the other one is you have a little bit of flatness on that um, hairline that's going into the Liberty a little bit more, which if I can compare it to the 09 we just looked at is going to mean it's not quite the same grade. Also, the the wreath you can just see there's a touch more flatness of course that n is almost gone the bottom of that n that's an indicator that the coin is authentic that's uh they had one reverse die for these and you can see the lines on the shield are just a little bit flatter than they were on that 09 09s so they call this coin a vf25 brown and so that's you can you can compare the two and it's really helpful to have them kind of side by side and and uh, be able to see the difference in those VFs. <clears throat> the hard part is when you look at them at a glance, it can be really hard to tell the difference on those coins. It's not until you get into the details to where you can see that, okay, those those uh, leaves are a lot more defined, the shield's more defined, uh, the Liberty, the hairline going into the Liberty is more there. And it's hard to tell sometimes because like the word Liberty is almost impossible to read on this coin because it's kind of lightly struck, but you can see though that the hair is not worn up into that headdress band. So the 77, great coin, tough coin. Uh, this guy here trades anywhere from I think about eleven to twelve hundred dollars at, at this at this point in time. But that's always changing. Speaking of this point in time, this 1884 Carson City Morgan dollar. It's a coin that traditionally I wouldn't have sent in in this grade because you know they're just traditionally not that expensive but these coins have turned from $200 coins to $400 coins seemingly overnight um, I will say again that I still believe that to be a temporary thing um, but we shall see you guys can all tell me how wrong I am later uh, a lot of little chatter to it you got a couple little marks up in that open field that's the way they tend to collect it seems and then a few more marks over here on the back side. 
Overall, I thought the coin looked pretty good. I actually thought it could be a 64, but they called it a 63. No crying over misgraded Carson cities, right? So uh, it's a fine coin, really nice, attractive, nice bright white for someone who's looking for just white coins and they want to get into the Carson City market and they don't want to go into those price points of uh, MS 65s. That's a nice, nice starter coin for your Carson City collection. All right, now this coin I want to spend a little bit of time on. This is 1886. And this is from our good friends at the New Orleans Mint. And this coin, very, very, very particular to this date. 1886, New Orleans, you know, all the dates have different um, kind of their own attributes. And 1886 O's are really interesting coins because I have had, I have had probably, uh, I don't know, eight, nine, ten of these guys that the grade was almost identical to this coin. And it's like a coin flip as to what what grade it'll get. These coins come very flatly struck, although this almost has a strong strike for an 86.0. That ear is pretty strong. The, the hair above the ear is pretty strong. So half the time when I send these in, they come back AU58, and half the time they come back MS60. It's one of the few coins that I can consistently get an MS60 grade on. And one of the things that's interesting is it's a coin that has one of the single largest jumps from AU to UNC. Uh, Gray Sheet has MS60 at $950 and AU58 at $275. So it's really fascinating the fine line between between an AU and an UNC. And this coin here, you know, I was hoping to get an UNC. I'm not going to complain about it uh, because, like I said, I, I knew going in that this is a 50 50 coin. It's just, it could go either way, and I just have to kind of accept the grade. So they have they have um, this really fine lines across the cheek and hair. You know, you want to see something that's actual rub and actual wear. I think that's kind of what I'm always looking for on these as far as trying to figure out whether it's going to go AU or UNC, and it's very hard to tell. But uh, this is a good coin for anyone who wants, who's putting a date set together and they don't want to spend $1,000 on an MS60. Um, not sure exactly what these trade at. I know Gray Sheet's about 275 but, you know, the market's really changing on Morgan's on a seemingly hourly basis. So uh, a smaller box of coins to show you, but a couple power coins there with those Indian head cents. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button. Watch more videos from the right side and leave comments down below. Thanks.